I know that there are people out there who are staunch supporters of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, whether we're talking about the men's line, the women's line, and every year they release a summer flanker, and usually they're named after different parts of Italy. This one is very simply called Italian Love. It's a 2022 release. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin my fragrance review of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Italian Love, and I tell you all about this fragrance, the smell, comparisons, the note breakdown, how it unfolds on my skin, all that good stuff, I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on that bell icon, and of course give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. So here we have the brand new summer limited edition, or at least that's what I was told by my Macy's rep. I purchased this one recently, got a chance to wear it a few times around the house, and now I'm ready to position myself in front of the camera and give you my thoughts on this fragrance. So looking at the note breakdown, there's bergamot, there's grapefruit, there's musk, there's vetiver, there's guayaquil, a little bit of patchouli if I'm remembering correctly, and also cashmeron in the heart in addition to those ozonic ingredients. So this one is... <laughs> One that I think everybody should smell just as a frame of reference and I'll explain why in just a little bit. I'm also going to be letting you know how I think it stacks up to other fragrances released within this collection. But let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. Now the opening of this fragrance, I think is going to be a little bit polarizing. And that's just because you have to call a spade a spade. I have to tell it like it is. There is this musky grapefruit smell in the opening that I think is going to appeal to a lot of people, but I think a lot of people will find it to be just a little bit too weird, a little bit too quirky. And you know, it's different from Light Blue Forever, which was last year's Summer Flanker. That one had a very realistic grapefruit in the opening, which it smelled rather tart. Some people would even say sour or bitter. I just feel like it smelled very tart, but equally citrusy, equally effervescent. This fragrance opens up with a musky grapefruit. And I think that musky quality could potentially be a turnoff for some people. I've actually spoken to a few people who said that it smelled a bit sour on their skin. They couldn't really get along with it. Now, here's the thing, that musky quality eventually does settle down. So although you might smell it in the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the fragrance's life, it's not something that exists forever, right? <laughs> and so this is one where you really gotta try it on skin and you gotta give it a chance to settle down. Now, here's the thing. I think that there's gonna be people who will really enjoy that musky grapefruit vibe that you're gonna get in the opening. And in my opinion, it does not give off a vibe of not being clean or anything like that. It's not that kind of a musky ingredient, not musty, right? So it doesn't smell like you're overworked and you're sweating or anything like that. But I think that sour quality from the grapefruit could potentially be a little bit off-putting to some people. Now, it does have ample freshness in here. So the bergamot, the grapefruit, it opens up smelling very uniquely citrusy. And then once you give it a chance to settle down, the violet starts to come through and the violet, the musk, the vetiver, and some of these other green ingredients just contribute to that clean smell. But the musk can definitely be a little bit overpowering for some people. And that combined with that tart, almost sour quality from the grapefruit is a very interesting combination. Now, I admire Dolce & Gabbana for releasing something that's not just very plain and generic and something that you've smelled before. This is actually quite different. And so I really appreciate the uniqueness and the originality behind this composition. But I do think that in the same vein, this one might not appeal to the same amount of people that light blue intense, for example, would appeal to a lot of people. And so I think that there are some quote unquote safer options from this brand, especially within this line, for example, 
that you might not necessarily get from this fragrance or even light blue forever which was also kind of like an explosion of grapefruit but i personally love light blue forever i love light blue sun which had a, a, a suntan lotion kind of a quality about it i know some of the summer variations might be a little bit harder to find just because they were released for a very narrow window of time and then they became discontinued but i there have been some released throughout the years that i've really enjoyed this one i i actually do enjoy but with the caveat that i don't think it's going to appeal to everyone and so again take what i say with a grain of salt Ultimately, you will be the judge over how this fragrance smells on you, how it interacts with your skin chemistry, your pH levels, and also how it caters to your personal taste. Some people might really enjoy it. Some people might find it to be a little bit too much on the challenging side of things with that sort of sour bitterness and that muskiness that comes from the grapefruit and the musk. But the green qualities in here are of the clean variety. There is something ozonic and oceanic about this fragrance without smelling salty. So there's no driftwood, there's no salt accord. If you're looking for something with that, I would definitely check out XX Artisan Teal by John Barbados. That one actually goes in the salty direction. Uh, this one, citrusy and even now, I sprayed this on maybe like 20 minutes ago, the musky quality is starting to become a bit more gentle. And so this is a fragrance where, you know, don't dismiss it the first time you smell it. Some people might really enjoy that quirky quality about it. If you're looking for a fresher grapefruit fragrance, I would recommend Afternoon Swim by Louis Vuitton, Tiger by Bulgari, The Key by Navitus Parfum. So there's a lot of really fresh grapefruit fragrances without that sourness and so this one does possess a little bit of that sourness so in any case i hope you get a chance to try it soon and if you do drop your comment down below i i, I love to see what other people's reactions are like so thank you for watching let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment so first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell i love that quirkiness that is coming from that musky grapefruit although i will admit yet again that i don't think it's going to appeal to everyone if light blue forever wasn't your thing there's a very strong chance that you're not going to be a fan of this one either so i kind of like the direction they're going in in you know the direction of uniqueness and originality but i think that there are some compromises is to be made along the way in terms of the volume of people that will take interest in the product but you know what i love what dolce gabbana is doing keep up the great work and i'm enjoying this one i'll probably make it my scent of the day today longevity on this fragrance is about six to seven hours projection is great for the first hour to hour and a half of application in terms of the versatility summertime you know spring summer definitely casual and I can see this one being enjoyed by both men and women despite the fact that there's also a women's version which I think is quite good also gives off a little bit of that clean fresh grapefruit violet quality I'll probably review this one at a future date on my channel but very versatile I just think it's great for the hotter weather and it will probably appeal to somebody who's a little bit older because of that musky component and somebody who's younger because of the citrusy component generally speaking Dolce & Gabbana in terms of its signature standard line of perfumes does make some very accessible fragrances that are appealing to a younger crowd and I don't think this is an exception I don't think K is an exception right so they have a lot of fragrances that are very youthful or appealing to a youthful audience I should say presentation on it Italian love there's a bit of ambiguity in the name but I do enjoy the aesthetic of it with the white hardware and the dark blue bottle my final verdict is this is not the safest fragrance from Dolce & Gabbana especially considering the fact that it's a summer flanker you just expect it to be this overdose of citrus that who wouldn't like it but that musky and sour quality about it I think is something really special albeit not something that's going to appeal to everyone but I appreciate the uniqueness and the originality and I hope you have a chance to try it soon drop your comment down below if you've tried it thank you for watching love you all thank you for taking the time to watch this review I can't even express how much it means to me if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon give it a thumbs up love you all we'll see you tomorrow bye